Hi, welcome to another episode of Spit Takes. I'm your host, Jens Anderson, a.k.a. Spittle. And I'm Ellen Anderson. And we are going to talk to you about the latest episode of Gotham, which is called Red Hood. And uh, it was a good episode. Right. I enjoyed it very much. Right, and this isn't Little Red Riding Hood. No, it has nothing to do with the fairy tale. There are no wolves and grandmothers and all those kind of things. Now, you um, know a little bit more about Red Hood than I do. I do, I do. And um, uh, we'll get into that a little bit okay. once we start talking about the episode. Um, but we had some people commenting on our last episode of Spit Takes uh, that had to do with Gotham. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that episode, we went over. So... People actually weighed in and commented on YouTube and tweeted us using the hashtag spit takes, which you see right here. And uh, let's weigh in and or let's let them weigh in and get some of their comments in. Sure. After the last episode of Gotham, the Red Hood, I tweeted this out. Great episode, Gotham. Do you agree? What was your favorite moment? Tell us at hashtag spit takes. Well, Superhero Universe took us up on that and he said, Spittle, my favorite part of Gotham was when fish scooped out her own eye. Gross, but badass. I totally agree with you there, Superhero Universe. It was really disgusting, very shocking, completely unexpected, and the kicker was when she stomped on it with her foot at the end. The look on Jeffrey Coombs' face, the manager, was uh, priceless. Good job, Fish. That actually uh, puts you in the badass category in my book. And from Aaron Duncan, Hey, Spittle. I was thinking you should give your guess on what is going to happen in the next episode of Gotham and Flash. Well, stay tuned, because we're going to do just that later in the episode. And I think it's a great idea. I think Spittle does, too. I definitely do. Thanks for the suggestion. All right, so that was you guys kind of letting us know what your thoughts were about the episode, and we really do appreciate you weighing in on uh, on that episode. It was a lot of fun to watch. We really enjoyed reading your comments and checking out your keep tweets as well. Keep them coming. Yeah, keep them coming. Remember, after the episode of... Uh, Gotham or Arrow or Flash or anything that we really cover on Spit Takes, let us know how you felt about it using the hashtag Spit Takes, which you can see right here, or comment on the video on YouTube once it goes up there, and we would love to hear about it, and maybe you can have your comment read on the show as well. I think he wants to comment. Yeah, Bunsen wants to comment very much. What do you want to say? Hey, but Mr. Bill, what do you want to say? There we go. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's talk about the latest episode of Gotham, which was called The Red Hood. There were really kind of uh, three things going on here. Of course, Gordon and Bullock dealing with the Red Hood gang, right, which mm-hmm. was a, an interesting storyline. Then we had um, Bruce Wayne, major storyline going on there with him and Alfred. Yes. And then we also had some stuff going on with Fish Mooney. Holy eyeballs, Batman. Oh, you know what? I forgot my spoon. I, uh, were, were you going to bring a spoon? <laughs> yes. Just to torment me with it? I was, <laughs> yes, I was going to gouge your eye out with a wooden spoon. <laughs> it would have been a wooden spoon even. <laughs> awesome. If you're not familiar with the wooden spoon uh, phenomenon, oh boy, have you been missing out on a lot on FNL and SOE Live. <laughs> yeah, that probably would have made that hurt more. Actually, let's talk about that. So, you know, Fish Mooney is going, uh, she's still in that dungeon and everything like that. And she demands to go meet the doctor, who we learn right. is Dr. Dolmacher. Yes. Which, to be honest with you, the name isn't familiar with me from my, you know, knowledge of DC or Batman. I will, ha- I didn't Google it though. So, Dolmacher sounds like doll maker. It almost sounds like Actually, it really does. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm not familiar with it either, but I was literally thinking doll maker. Who could that be? Interesting. But then That's I got That's a good busy. theory, actually. Yes. I'm impressed. <laughs> the brain. <laughs> wow. I just got blown away. I just fell Master in love with you Blaster. all over again. <laughs> Will you marry me again? <laughs> Maybe. Anyway. Well, You're a bum. I don't know. Oh, I am a bum. <laughs> I am a bum. Um, so, yeah, that's a really interesting theory. But we did meet the manager, who actually might be Dr. Dolmacher. Yeah, uh, he is. Jeffrey Coombs. I'm pretty sure he is. You yeah. think? It's yeah. Jeffrey Coombs. I think that's the guy. Great character actor. We've seen him on Star Trek, uh, the kind of TNG series of stuff. Well, right. actually, it was Deep Space Nine. He played Wei Young. And he also played, um, I forget the Andorian's name on Star Trek Enterprise that he played, but he was uh, a great alien in both of those. And of course, we've shown a clip of him on Spit Takes in the past. Yes, with him with his pineal gland the exploding pineal out gland. of his head. And of course, uh, you know, I want to date myself here and say I remember in college seeing Reanimator, which yeah. was one of my favorite movies at the time. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm still pretty fond of it. He was in Frighteners. Uh, yes. Played that weird uh, FBI cult investigator. Yeah, he kind of cool. kind of looked like a little bit like uh, Hitler. Yeah. In that. So was he was odd. the manager, um, and you know, Fish meets with him, and he's creepy as ever in this. Very cool character so far. Yeah. Kind of, you know, wants to talk to her and gets her to try and relax because she goes to take a shower. And then he basically is like, here's how it's going to be. Right. We're going to kill everybody downstairs. Or I could just take your eyes right now. They would fetch a pretty price on, uh, you know, the market. They're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Those are your two options. And then she basically... I'll take. Yeah. You forgot <laughs> I'll option take three. I'll behind curtain number three. Yeah. Which is my own eyeball. <laughs> and she like gouges out. Actually, it's this eye. This eye. <laughs> Gouges out her own eye. Could right. you even imagine like doing that? Why a spoon, cousin? Why not an axe? Because it's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. No, um, I guess if I had access to a spoon and I had her strength and agility, I probably would have taken his eye out. <laughs> right? Or I at least would have I've stabbed him in the neck and taken something. away with the guard. I mean, I, I probably would have done that. If you, she just taken him out, um... It yeah. was shocking. Go for the head. The, I, I did know, not take expect the head that. off the snake is what I say. I did not expect that. Yeah, she's a masochist. And Holy then she shit. stomps on it at the end, like squashes it with her right. own. Ugh. But this is also uh, so. Here's here's my take on it. Okay. So I think she will get an eye transplant. You know what? I was wondering how they were going to handle this going forward. Yeah. Like, like that she would have to wear a patch Hello, forever. Hello, she's in the right place. Right. It's like total Teresa's. She could just be like, and you know what? I just did that, and now I'm going to kick your ass, and you're going to give me a new fucking eye. So, or eye. I forget which one. Yeah, it's this one. This one. And so, you know what? So all they have to do now, instead mm -hmm. of having her wear a patch for the rest of the series, mm -hmm. they just put a contact lens in to give her another colored eye. Possibly, yeah. So I, I, I'm totally thinking they're going to do that because you can just write your way around. Double that. impressed. So Ellen rocking it this here. episode. So I should be a writer, man. Yeah, <laughs> right? Hey, Gotham Writers, right here. Oh, and, and uh, kudos to casting for getting Jeffrey Coombs. Yeah, Excellent that's really choice. good stuff. Um, and then, so we, that left off with that cliffhanger right there. I like your theories on that. That's good stuff. Um, and then we also had uh, this stuff going on with Bruce Wayne. Major major shit happening there um i guess an old friend of alfred's named reg reg reginald Payne, reg they call him reggie uh shows up at wayne manor and alfred takes him in he's down on his luck he's been drinking lost his wife lost his house apparently he's hit hard he says he's hit hard times yeah. uh he's in a really dark place yeah and bruce allows alfred to let him stay for a few days and we start seeing some dark stuff here like um, you know, at one point they have, they have dinner together, which, which by the way, this scene was interesting. They actually had dinner, you know, Alfred, uh, uh, and, and, and Reggie split, split a bottle of wine mm -hmm. and it's a nice bottle of wine. One of Thomas Wayne's favorites, in right. fact. And, you know, uh, Bruce is totally fine with it. And they all sit around this quaint little kitchen mm -hmm. table in this kitchen having a conversation. It reminded me of... The original Batman that Tim Burton did, when she's like, "Can you please pass the salt?" And they go into there. And they go back into the kitchen and they just have dinner with Alfred. Yeah. And Alfred, of course, tells a story about him spraining his ankle and being, yeah. you know, sort of over a pony while Bruce is bringing him back to the manor. And in this version, Alfred and Reg are talking. Reggie's talking about how Alfred used to like kill right. people, like was just like this insanely skilled killer. I like your take on that because my take is awful. Mine is like Batman meets Downton Abbey. Oh, <laughs> maybe because yeah. No, I thought it, I thought it was a nice see, little. See, yours nod. is better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I can see the Downton Abbey thing because they're both British, but it, it goes a little dark later when um, uh, Reg starts to you know teach Bruce a little bit about boxing. You know, Alfred's been doing it in a very measured way. Yeah, and Reggie just has Reggie's him like Foghorn Leghorn, and of course. You know, young Wait, master. What? Young ma it's he, and he's like the chicken hawk. Oh, you know, <laughs> young young Come on, Bruce son, Wayne is like. <laughs> Look at here, son. I'm no loud mouth snook. This is a dog, not a chicken. Chickens don't look like dogs. Who told you this was a chicken, son? <laughs> he's practically holding yeah, like, his head back. <laughs> Actually, but he does the opposite, right? He's like, hit me as hard as you can. Hit me again. Hit me again. Right, right. And right. he lets Bruce taste inflicting pain on somebody and what it really feels like to punch someone in the head mm -hmm. and in the face and draw blood to be dirty 
fighting it's dirty. Brutal, brutal. Like he almost gets him to like hit him with a the uh, umbrella or cane or something like that until Alfred intervenes. It was a sword. So you're not sure if he's just being. It wasn't a sword. I don't think it was some kind of blunt object. Uh, I thought we'll check the he, tape. He, he, yeah. Sword. Blunt object. Cane. S- either S-word. umbrella. S word for ten dollars. Oh, I think you're gonna fail. Survey says. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to take a look. So, right. one of us is $10 richer. So, eventually, uh, you know, Half Reginald, Reginald kind of pushes it too far. And um, Alfred asks him to leave. Uh, and he finds Reggie that night down in Bruce's study in Wayne Manor, like, stealing stuff. Yeah. And he intervenes, and, and actually Reggie stabs Alfred. And Bruce, we don't know how long uh, Alfred was bleeding out on the floor when Bruce finally found him, but Bruce calls. But it's Reg, and this guy was... His friend. Like, some kind of special forces. Yeah, they were, like, in the, some kind of UK version of the SEALs or something. Right, so, um, which is, like, my great-grandfather, who actually yes. was. But anyway, yeah. that's another story. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, totally. So, you know it's, like, that's that's just got to be a, a, a probably almost a death kill right there. Yeah. Um, a death kill? A de- yeah. As opposed to a life kill? Or a death life. Or... Not what I meant to say. <laughs> Fail on words. I'm going to death kill you now. <laughs> yeah! Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill. Murder, death, kill. Murder, death, kill. Murder, death, kill. Last. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, you're, I take one impressed away. You're down to, you're, you have one impressed I'm going to be negative points You're going to be negative impressions by the time this is done. Um, so that was a great storyline. And then at the end of it, the huge reveal is that Reg is actually working for the corrupt board of Wayne Enterprises. And he, what he was doing at the desk right there wasn't really stealing silver. He was like stealing all the files that Bruce had been working on and all the, 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 the board, or at least some members of the board are looking at it. And basically they're talking about assassinating Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So he was there to eliminate and he didn't even give a shit. He was doing recon. Yeah, he's doing recon and yeah. also I'm get gonna, Alfred out I'm of gonna the way. get him out of the way. Yep. And um, not caring if he's making noise down there, thinking out well if Alfred comes down, I'll just take care of him. He'll be surprised. Yeah. Get you know, get one over on him. And uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty, pretty awful. And immediately I was like, wow, Wayne Enterprises, brutal. Brutal. And which is weird too, because just really briefly before we moved to the Red Hood, I was thinking about this. How long was Thomas Wayne actually on the board right now, or is it being run by someone else? Um, you know, was because this seems to like, but the time Thomas died to right now, there's a lot of corruption that has gone into this, like deep, deep, like huge plans and and like kind of machinery in the works here. So either that was going on a long time without Thomas's knowledge or Thomas had something to do with that, which I really can't believe because it can't, the corruption in that level of it can't pop up that quickly. No. So anyway, um, and then last is the Red Hood storyline, which we saw, which was a bunch of dimwit, um, you know, uh, bank robbers. And one of them decided to bring a little flair and put on a red mask that he made out of something. He just cut two holes in it. And uh, they start robbing banks, and each of them keep knocking the other one off to take the hood because they view the hood as lucky, or it's a symbol of leadership, or it's going to make their girlfriend be impressed with them. So they keep killing each other one by one, and you really start getting the feeling that to have the red hood is almost like a death sentence, like it's almost like a curse to wear it. But it gains such huge notoriety throughout the episode, not only with the gang, but also, it takes on this kind of Robin Hood quality to the people of Gotham and the mm-hmm. downtrodden because people start hanging out in banks hoping that it'll be knocked off by the Red Hood gang because the Red Hood always throws up money to uh, you know give the people from the bank. Right. So, um, so with Red Hood, after the in that episode, the last Red Hood is killed. The Red Hood mask, or the hood, excuse me, the mask. The Red Hood is found on a sidewalk. Who picks it up? A little kid. Yep. Yeah, and he does this whole thing with like with the cops and everything like that so, there you so go. the corruption in gotham is also felt in the police department and people know it so now they feel like the red hood is this sort of anti robin hood in a way now this is really cool because they just introduced a character that they were touting as the joker mm-hmm. and they just introduced the red hood and the reason the joker falls in the chemicals and the vats because somebody gets him to put on the red hood and be the leader of the red hood gang for some uh, caper that they were doing and batman ends up dropping him as the red hood so do you think they're into a chemical do you think they'll vat. do the chemical vat thing Oh, I don't think they'll ever get to that on this show. Okay. This is like Smallville, right? He didn't right. get he didn't get the suit for Superman suit until the very last episode. 
So right. I guess it really depends on how long Go- uh, Gotham's going to run. It's not going to run that long. Smallville ran for 10 years. Yeah, that's true. I mean, unless they fast forward and they have a young Bruce just as a fledgling Batman, but right. I don't know that they're going to go there. They might. That would be interesting. I hope they do evolution of the show before it's done. That would be kind of cool. But I don't know if they are if they can right now, given what's going on with the Justice. Uh, who knows? But cool episode nonetheless. Did you like it? Thumbs up, thumbs down, middle thumb? Well... Uh, Sideways 10 thumb. points for Jeffrey Coombs. Okay. Like, 100 points for Fish Mooney yeah. gouging out her eye. Yeah. I completely awesome. didn't expect that. That's 110 points so 110 far. 110 points. <laughs> um, I would say Red Hood is like 5 points for me. 5 points? Yeah. Wow, okay, 115 points. Maybe Red Hood's points. not my favorite. So, okay. um, what about the Reginald uh, Payne storyline with Bruce and oh. Alfred? That's like 200 points. 200 points. All right. 315 point score on this episode from Ellen. 7,000. 8,000. No. This this is impossible. I don't know what the scale is, but that's pretty good if you ask me. 315 simoleons. No. <laughs> So, All right. I don't know. There, I don't know what the point scale is or if it's like pesos or I don't know. Yeah. Like euros, who knows. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, we look forward to talking about the next episode of uh, Gotham, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll share a little bit about our thoughts that we, about that episode with you right now. Jim looks pissed. Big gun, too. Ooh, a lot of rage coming out there <laughs> to protect the city. In a city... Where James Gordon never sleeps. <laughs> In a world where Alfred has been shot. Oh, did you see the stuff with the Riddler going on there? Like there was like stuff in the wall. Oh, look who it is! Ooh, it's Patches McGee! No, no! Look who it was. Did you not see? That's the dude from uh from um the sto- uh, the storm thousand year storm or whatever it is. Oh, What's it called? I forget the actor's name. Yeah, he plays the sorcerer. Give me what I want, and I will go. Yeah, that's cool stuff. I- storm of the century. Stephen storm King. of the century. That's it. That's exciting. Yeah, that's, that's cool. doll doll maker doll the doll maker the doll maker. So you think the yes. the doll maker is happening? There's gonna be doll mocker doll maker. Sorry. That's cool. Very cool. I love seeing him. Wonder what's going on with the Riddler, too. He seems to be going on a little he's more of a give tilt. Her, he's going to give her a new eye. Uh, we'll see what he does. He totally is. Maybe some fish fins, too, like fish scales, so she can truly be fish moony. A fish eye. A fish eye. There you go. <laughs> I like it. So that's what's coming up next week on uh, the next episode of Gotham. And uh, we're looking forward to talking about it and hearing your responses. Remember, when the show is live or when you see the video, please comment on YouTube, tweet us at, uh, uh, on, uh, on Twitter with hashtag spit takes, and let us know how you felt so we can read your comments on the show um, and we can talk about them here on the next episode. Until then, take care. Have a good one. See ya.